Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the official Steam OS is supported by the Steam Deck and Legion Go S. I really like the operating system and recently I've been wondering how well it would run on PC. Not just any PC though, a fairly modest gaming system with an i5 12400F and RX 6500 XT. I've spent the last couple of days installing Steam OS on my PC and today I want to talk about my experience doing so as well as any issues I faced. I'll also be comparing the performance of Steam OS on on PC to that of Windows 10, which I currently use on a daily basis. First, my specs. I'm using an i5-12400F on an H610M board with 16 gigs of DDR4 and a 6500 XT. I had to swap the motherboard as I'll explain later, and as for the GPU, I think you need an AMD card to get this working. I'm also using an NVMe M.2 SSD, which I think is a necessity too, because I tried with a SATA SSD first of all, and I got an error. There's a reason this is not a tutorial. The first thing I did was download the Steam Deck OS image and flash it to a bootable USB using Rufus. After that I plugged it into my PC, disabled secure boot in the BIOS or, in the case of my motherboard, just enabled CSM mode instead of UEFI and booted to the drive. After a couple of seconds I got a lot of text on screen, none of which made much sense, but there were a lot of OKs which is always a good sign, right? The screen then went blank for a while before a cursor appeared a few minutes later. Then a desktop appeared a few moments after that. It's important to use an M.2 drive that doesn't have anything important on it because we're going to choose to wipe the device and install the Steam OS. This whole interface may be a bit slow to respond and perhaps a bit sluggish until Steam OS is installed properly. A little box will pop up with a warning that everything on the drive will be destroyed. Very dramatic. After clicking proceed and waiting through another few minutes, the Steam OS setup screen appeared. Bad news though, because it wouldn't detect my Ethernet connection, and this H610M board doesn't have built in Wi Fi. I also don't have a wireless USB adapter anymore. With that, I swapped my cheap motherboard out for an ASUS Strix Z790 and started over. This is a DDR5 board, and I only have 32. 2 gigs of 6400MHz DDR5 on hand, so my budget gaming setup just became way less budget. Nonetheless, the Steam setup actually detected my network this time and just like that, SteamOS booted up into action with a screen that will look very familiar to all of you Steam Deck users, albeit about 44 inches wider. This is an ultra wide 1440p display and our system will struggle with games at this resolution. Luckily we can change this from within the display menu. I also had to turn off HDR because it was on by default and it was washing everything out. What's nice is that we can either use it in a traditional Steam Deck style or in desktop mode which is far more snappy and responsive now that the OS is installed properly. I actually left it in desktop mode to install my games but switched back to the regular gaming mode later on. My keyboard and mouse also work just fine so I could play CS2 through the Steam OS just like I would on Windows. Terribly. Me that is. Not the performance, that's actually pretty good, I just mean me as a CS2 player. Awful. I apologise if things aren't all that clear, I had to record the screen externally like some sort of 2009 era Call of Duty no scoper compilation creator. My capture box finally gave up altogether last week. That said, I was able to enable the performance overlay just like with the Steam Deck itself, so frame rate and hardware utilisation are up on screen, if you can see them. CS2 felt really good to play and I'll have some comparative figures coming up with a handful of games whereby I could use a benchmark run. So CS2, as I've said, runs fine with keyboard and mouse. I didn't use my controller because I'm already terrible, and no doubt that would make me a lot worse. CS2 took a few minutes, about 10, to compile the shaders before starting, but after that it was faultless. Forza Horizon 4 also ran nicely. I started with medium and then kept up in things until I got to ultra and once there I was surprised by how well things ran. This is one of my favourites and I choose it over 5 most of the time because it's a smaller file size. I used a 256 gig SSD for my SteamOS install today which wasn't the best idea in hindsight but I wasn't even sure if it would work in the first place. Red Dead Redemption 1 also ran at Ultra with FSR 3 at native. Again, I'm very sorry about the quality, but I plan to make a few more SteamOS videos, and by then I'll have a new capture card. 
Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 ran okay to start with until we ran out of VRAM and then it started getting slower and slower. That was until I enabled FSR and things soon picked right back up again. The 6500 XT is a 4 gigabyte card after all. The Black Myth Wukong benchmark ran great too. The controller didn't work at first but I restarted the game and then unplugged and plugged in the controller again and then it did. So that was weird but there were no more issues at all after that. Shadow of the Tomb Raider gave me a warning about an unsupported operating system which is never nice to see but I completely ignored that, hit continue and then the game ran fine, literally no issues. I ran the benchmark and played a few levels with no complaints. But how does performance compare to Windows? Now I have a small sample of comparisons today as I only have a handful of games that have a benchmark tool. I did try and add Cyberpunk, but I have it on GOG. And although I managed to get GOG Galaxy installed with a workaround, the game installation itself kept failing. I'll try another method at some point. It's early days for me and the SteamOS desktop experience. Now these comparisons aren't all that fair, both SteamOS and Windows handle rendering differently. Windows uses DirectX for example, but I thought it would be interesting nonetheless. For the Windows tests I used whatever the default API was, or if there was a choice, I chose whichever ran the game better. Like in Tomb Raider for example, DX12 ran slightly better than 11, so I used that. The footage is just generic footage captured from my PC. Something for a little bit of background. Now in Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the high preset and uh, DX12 in Windows we hit 73 frames per second but here with the same system and SteamOS installed we actually got 78 so it's an improvement of about 5 frames per second here after the benchmark run had completed 3 times on both systems. For Counter Strike 2 I used a benchmark workshop map to uh, get the figures here and it was the same run for both systems. So with Windows running in DX11, which is the default API, we saw 223, and the SteamOS on the same machine hit 183. So it was quite a bit less uh, when running the SteamOS here at native 1080p medium, albeit with FSR disabled. The Black Myth Wukong benchmark ran a little better, this time on SteamOS, 42 frames per second, up from 37. This is at low with native resolution and FSR enabled. So FSR uh, was the um, anti-aliasing method, but it was set to 100% res scaling. So slightly better with SteamOS here with the i5 and 6500 XT. Now, Forza Horizon 4, this is really interesting. I'm glad I left this one in. Um, I do not know what was going on here, but with Windows at Ultra and DX12, by default, of course, we only saw 61 FPS, which is good, fine, plus 60 FPS is always decent. But with SteamOS installed on this same rig, we saw 96 frames per second, so over 30 FPS more with Steam Deck OS installed on our budget gaming machine here. Now at first I thought it was something I was doing, perhaps I had one um, machine with dynamic res enabled without noticing, so I actually went back and installed uh, the game again after uninstalling it and shutting down the system for the day. This is why the video is a day later than I wanted because I was testing Forza multiple times. But yeah, Ultra, native resolution, 1080p, 61 FPS under Windows, 96 FPS with SteamOS. I, I don't know what was going on here but I thought I'd leave this one in because it's a pretty interesting result but I'm still convinced I did something wrong here to get this it's a it's a weird one but yeah the Steam OS is running a lot better with this game at the opposite end of the spectrum so to speak we have a CS2 running a lot better on the Windows than Steam OS so perhaps it's not that far-fetched after all but there we are Steam OS installed on my budget gaming PC the official Steam OS now I think if you want an alternative to Windows there are plenty of Linux distros out there and installing SteamOS may not be the best idea in regards to compatibility especially when it's only officially out for Steam Deck and the Legion Go so you know it's it's worth a try I think make sure you install it on a drive that doesn't have anything important on it but I've been meaning to test out Windows alternatives for a while and I thought what better place to start than an operating system I've come to really enjoy from my time with the Steam Deck but as for this one thanks for watching let me know your thoughts down below if you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you want to, of course, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.